from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Wednesday, October the 14th, 2020. Well, for the first time in three decades, Israel and Lebanon sat down together for border negotiations today. As we reported to you, the discussions were regarding the country's maritime border. The talks were hosted by the United Nations, and Israeli and Lebanese representatives met in tents at the UN Interim Force in Lebanon, or UNIFIL, headquarters in Nakura, not far from the Israeli border. And while the Israeli and Lebanese teams were in the same tent, the Lebanese stressed that the discussions were indirect and they reportedly refused to speak directly to the Israeli side with everything going through a mediator, U.S. Ambassador to Algeria, John DeRocher. A joint statement from the United States and the United Nations said that during this initial meeting, the representatives held productive talks and reaffirmed their commitment to continue negotiations later this month. Those negotiations will reportedly take place on October the 26th or 28th. Israel's Channel 12 reports that the IDF conducted a covert raid overnight last night on neighboring Syria, destroying two Syrian military posts in the demilitarized zone between the countries in the Golan Heights. It was meant to be seen as a warning, reportedly, to Syrian President Bashar Assad for him to keep from setting up Syrian army positions in the buffer zone close to Israel, which is a violation of international law. No casualties were reported. The Jewish lawyer who made history arguing and winning a landmark case to the Supreme Court has died. Bernard Cohen was 29 years old in 1964 when, through the American Civil Liberties Union and together with his co-counsel, Philip Hirschkop, also Jewish, successfully argued and won Loving versus the Commonwealth of Virginia, the case relating to Mildred and Richard Loving, the interracial couple who were barred from living together in the state of Virginia by its Racial Integrity Act. The case overturned the laws banning interracial marriage. Cohen, who went on to serve in the Virginia House of Delegates, was 86 years old. And Broadway lyricist Herbert Kretzmer has died. Kretzmer was best known for writing the lyrics to the English musical adaptation of Les Miserables. He was born in South Africa to Jewish immigrant parents from Lithuania and began his career as a journalist and then later a drama critic. He was 95. Germany will provide over half a billion euros, about $662 million, to help Holocaust survivors during the coronavirus pandemic. The Conference on Jewish Material Claims Against Germany said today that the payments will help some 240,000 survivors around the world, most of them living in Israel, North America, the former Soviet Union, and Western Europe over the next two years. Jewish organizations lauded the designation this week from Guatemala of Hezbollah in its entirety as a terrorist organization. The American Jewish Committee saluted the Central American country's president, Alejandro Guillamate. CEO David Harris tweeted, We call on all countries to follow Guatemala's lead and take this important step in order to stop Hezbollah's nefarious activities. The differentiation between the Iranian-backed and Lebanese-based groups military and so-called political wing enables it to continue to operate in many countries around the world, though the number of countries that have barred the organization, as Harris noted, is growing, with Guatemala now joining Canada, Colombia, the Gulf Cooperation Council, Germany, Holland, Honduras, Israel, Kosovo, Lithuania, Paraguay, Serbia, the UK, and the US. And Jewish groups also welcomed Argentina's National Soccer Association, announcing this week that it has adopted the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance's definition of anti-Semitism, which includes the targeting of the state of Israel beyond standard criticism, as well as denying the Jewish people their right to self-determination, 
by claiming that the existence of a state of Israel is a racist endeavor. AFA President Claudio Chiquitapia said it was part of a broader initiative to clearly combat racism, discrimination, and anti-Semitism. The organization thanked the Simon Wiesenthal Center for its guidance. The Wiesenthal Center's international director, Shimon Samuel, said that the AFA's decision was proof that football, the beautiful game, must build bridges and not be a vector of hate. The AFA is the first national association to adopt the definition. B'nai B'rith International tweeted this groundbreaking decision should pave the way for more national football associations to sign on and take a stand against anti-Semitism. The University of Buenos Aires, UBA, also adopted the definition this week. Vice President of the Argentine Jewish Political Umbrella Organization, DAIA, Victor Garelic, told the JTA that in the case of soccer, there are lots of precedents of concrete discrimination by religion and by nationality, among others. And this decision, he said, represents a tool to fight against hate in our main sport. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Wednesday, October the 14th at 7 o'clock. Members of Congress speak at the Israel America Council. At 7.30, pro-Trump journalist and author Joel Pollack discusses Jewish issues relating to the 2020 election, including the U.S.-Israel relationship with Liz Burney for the ZOA Book Club. At 9, Mark Golub speaks with former Israeli ambassador to the U.S., Michael Oren, who explains why he wrote a book of short stories in a collection called The Night Archer and discusses the themes of many of them and the extent to which they are autobiographical. At 10.30, Israeli author David Grossman is honored at the URJ conference. And coming up next, it's Thinking Out Loud. And that's the JBS News update for Wednesday, October the 14th, 2020. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy. Stay well.